everyone. This is uh, Robin Halls from Athletic Academics, and uh, you're listening to the first episode of our uh, first ever podcast, the Athletic Academics podcast. Uh, and with me, I got uh, David Fletcher on the other side of the phone here. Uh, David, where are you situated right now? Hi, everyone. Yeah, um, I'm in the, the UK right now, uh, situated not too far, well, between London and Oxford, um currently hold up in my bedroom uh doing this podcast like most other people in europe right now with this coronavirus keeping us uh imprisoned um but it's good to be here and excited to get this series underway with robin and robin you want to tell everybody where you're located yeah so um first and foremost for for the uh, english listeners for the brits uh, beware of my accent. I'm from Sweden. I'm from uh, Linköping, uh, but I'm situated in in Vesteros, where I live with my with my girlfriend, uh, and I'm sitting on a small small chair in our bedroom right now for the for the best possible sound. And uh, me and David uh, figured, you know, it's the um, during these Corona times where we uh, many of us stay in in quarantine and uh, you know need to stay at home. We figured. You know why not entertain the people who who are at home with a with a podcast and hopefully this will be something that uh, will be uh, enjoyable for for most of you and uh, hopefully something for you guys to to listen at. Uh, but David, why, why don't you start um, telling everyone the reason behind why we started the podcast? Uh, you know what what do we want to uh, get out there? Is it solely information? Is it going to be a boring podcast or what? What, what are we aiming for? Yeah, well, hopefully not too much of a boring one. Um, but we're, we're, the main aims here really is to try and give uh, our listeners, which may be clients, might be potential clients or parents of clients, um, people that are perhaps looking to go and, and study and compete as athletes in the US university system, um, give them more information about this whole process from start to finish, uh, all kinds of things really, your own requirements academically or from a sporting perspective, um, what goes on throughout from day one all the way until going to the States and even beyond when you're out there. Um, so we want to kind of try and give you as much detail and knowledge about that over the next few weeks. Um, we bear in mind as well, we, we also want to hear a lot from listeners and, and have a very kind of two way relationship here where we can hear what you want to know, um, when you can message us with questions and join in, um, because really it's, it's a sort of, extended service for many of our kind of written material on our website or social media or emails anything that we can send out to people in written form it's sometimes nice to just sit back and maybe hear it in a spoken form um so that's that's really the the aim of this and also to have a little bit of fun and uh take our mind off of uh pretty dire times at the moment with with this coronavirus going on so yeah yeah and uh you know as you say david you know it's uh, for um, in in the way we work at Athletic Academics, I think you and me work um, quite equally. That's why we have the business together. But we we tend to try to listen listen to our players, listen to our athletes, and include them in our daily work as well when we uh, market them to schools and such. And and we want to have this podcast uh, in the same way. You know, we're we're here for for the clients, we're here for the parents, and hopefully it will give them a. A bit more information about college, uh, a bit more information about us, because it, it could be nice to to know who who they actually uh, are working with, who we are as people outside of work, what we what we did uh, throughout our time in college. Uh, there is plenty uh, to to talk about and plenty yeah. to to tell you guys about. Um, so I hope and I think that it will be a podcast that will be enjoyable to listen to and. I'm a huge fan of podcasts since me and David are working at uh, remote places. He, he lives in, in, in the UK and I live in Sweden. Uh, we very often um, talk throughout the days to keep each other company. And, and we are usually having an hour, hour and a half long talks every day. So we figured, you know, why, why not record them? And, and you guys can listen to our thoughts, uh, listen to our stories, and, and most and foremost, uh, the information uh, about the process. Uh, so there, there's plenty, plenty uh, to talk about. Uh, but why don't we move on to to the next section, David, so we don't get uh, too stuck in here uh, uh, with the podcast.
Let's talk about the, the company, Athletic Academics. In, in Sweden, uh, a lot of the kids have troubles saying Athletic Academics. They see the spelling, uh, you know, English is first and foremost their second language uh, already. So they are already a bit nervous speaking English. And then when they see an, an uh, English-ish name uh, of Athletic Academics, they usually say Athletic Academics, Athletic Academics. I've heard all types of uh, 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 examples and many of them uh, actually when they call me and, and need to say the name they just leave it blank they say oh yeah about and it just went quiet and i fill in oh you mean athletic academics oh yeah yeah that that thing uh but how, how do you really say it how do you pronounce it okay so the, the idea behind it is 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 to be pronounced as athletic academics so uh, the reason for it is and in our kind of idea behind this was uh, is a fusion of the two words of athletics and academics also with the little added mix at the end as, as a sort of sign of the combo of the of the two words so that's essentially as a student athlete in the u.s college system you are fusing together your ath athletics your sport and also your your education in the academics so that that's the, the general reason behind the the weird name or the the, the kind of a little bit of a unique name um so it's a fusion of those two words pronounced athletic academics yeah and we had one i remember when we discussed this we had one major thing that we did not want to do uh, there are plenty of of companies doing what we do and we wanted to to have you know a one word name we wanted to have something that is more of a brand more than an explanation of what we do we did not want to call it something with college or scholarships which is uh, very commonly used so we wanted to you know create something something bigger something that you could be recognizable with that when you hear athletic academics it shouldn't be a a question of uh you know oh are, are that those people or is that those people it should be oh there's solely one athletic academic so we wanted to stand out a bit as well um and if we go into our logo which you know many people says uh, looks like the paris saint germain uh, logo and and at first when i uh, explained it uh, you know a year ago or something uh, a lot of people was like Oh, I, I truly thought it was the Paris Saint Germain logo with the, <laughs> with the Eiffel Tower in it. Uh, but you know what? What we thought is uh, it should be um, first and foremost. It looks like an A in a circle, which is in itself it looks nice. And and since Athletic Academics has uh, several A's in it, it, it makes sense. But what we trying to do here is it should be uh, uh, two pathways going into one. So it should be athletics in, in uh, at the bottom left and academics uh, to the bottom right mixing together into one road which uh, is the college experience uh, first and foremost and then we wanted a circle or logo because we do a 360 service we don't solely find schools for you and then you'll have to do the admin yourself we we do everything for you and, and we guide you through everything so we wanted to have the circle or logo uh, because it it symbolizes what what we actually do we, we we do the whole whole process and you know it doesn't it's not a, a bad thing when it looks good on, on Instagram as well with the circle logo. So it's it's definitely a, a, a benefit, uh, first and foremost. Yeah, and I think also just on top of that as well is is the simplicity of the logo and uh, the branding too was very important to both Robin and I. Um, you know, we, as some people may have seen, we, we quite like the, the black and white color scheme and the simple logo as it is and, and the text we use is... Really, the reason for that is because it always wants us to remind us of our core values in, in what we do. And we're experts in a very specific niche field, which is uh, college sports consultants, basically. Um, and we don't kind of profess to be experts in dozens of other areas or trying to venture out into into unknown territory. What we know is that we, we can help athletes from different sports based on our own experience, which Robin and I will go on to chat about in a moment. Um, and we, we were reminded that on a daily basis by keeping things simple and, and to a sort of very, very few, few things that we, uh, we actually do and we do them very well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, if, if looking at the college process, um, and that process with a client or, or a, um, or an athlete, if, if you can, you know, paint out a, a typical picture of a typical athletic academics process, I know by working with this there, that there's no typical process. But uh, if you can explain how you want the process to be in terms of how we at athletic academics uh, 
will help a, a student, you know, the way we behave, the way the student behave, the way the family behave. How do we at Athletic Academics, you know, want to be? How do we want to provide our service? What, what makes us uh, maybe not stand out, but what is the core values of us in, in our daily work? Yeah, um, I think if this certainly we, we place a lot of emphasis on being on the same page as our clients and their parents, as a, as a family, before the process gets started, which is why we kind of try to have extensive information sharing and, and long meetings with with potential clients to, to make sure they're fully aware of what to expect, what's expected of them and, and the parents included in that, and then what they can expect from us. Um, we want there to be no surprises down the road at all for, for us or for, for you. But um, essentially, it's all just about being very good communicators and rising to this kind of fantastic opportunity, but also the challenges along the way in a, in a sort of mature way. Um, then if, if you can you know, bring that to the table, we certainly aim to do that from our side and you will maximize all of your opportunities as a result. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if looking at my own uh, experiences and, and at my uh, you know looking at looking back at the job you know it's it's most the the most fun processes i've had uh, throughout all the athletes i've helped this is when you know you've you've had long meetings before you've agreed on you know here's what we're aiming for i think you can uh, get to this level and and pay this amount of money to the college uh, the family agrees on it happy with it the student is on board the student completes their checklist the communication is great the family is on board the family is helping uh, and then you find options within exactly the range that we've agreed on the family is happy the student is happy uh, and it's just a good communication and communication is, is really key in this process that we are or we try to be transparent from day one to say that here's what you can expect here's what we can do if we can do better will be just as happy as you are. Uh, it's important to, to understand that uh, together with the, uh, with the player or the athlete, we are a team. Uh, we are not working for the schools. Uh, we are not working for commissions on, on any schools in, in the US. We are working as a team with the family in order to maximize um, the athlete's opportunity. So uh, I think what I try to, to, um, to do here in Sweden is to have a friendly atmosphere where you can be clear you can be honest your communication is transparent uh, but it should be in a friendly and respectful way and and i think both you and me can can agree on that we are super interested in our athletes uh, we put a lot of time and effort in following them uh, in encouraging them and, and helping them in, in any any way possible and uh, you know we stay in touch throughout the whole time in college uh, we we are generally interested and, and thankful for the people choosing us and i think that uh, makes us stand out a bit as well that we we truly yeah. care uh, and um, you know we do this uh, fully hearted for sure um, yeah I think a measure of success just to add to that is is that um, not just obviously assisting athletes through this process and, and finding them the college options that they're looking for and that they're delighted to to go forward with and, and the same with their parents they're, they're appreciative of that work that that's bare minimum that's that's the, the minimum standard um, but a measure of success, in my opinion, I know Robin shares this as well, is when you remain in contact with that client and their parents way beyond when they're in the States and even perhaps after they're graduated. If you're still in good contact with them and keeping in touch um, and have good relations, and that, that's for us is what we do this for. That's the passion that, that we have for this industry and, and having been athletes ourselves and also college coaches. Now in, in the other side, helping people go that way in the reverse. Um, you know, it's all about the, the, the human sort of contact, the, the communications between people that really gives us the sort of buzz to, to do as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. And I think many people uh, forget that in some ways the, the athletes that we help, they are our co-workers in a sense as well. So if you work at a big company and have 200 co-workers, those are your friends. Those are the ones you communicate with. Uh, you know, you and me, we are, our athletes uh, are in many ways our co-workers. So whenever you yeah. hear from an yeah. athlete with a question, you know, it's, it's not uh, met uh, with a... Uh, uh, deep breath for me saying oh now i need to answer this it's it's the other way around it's like oh great i have something to to respond on I, you know I, i'm going to communicate with uh louise for example i've helped several louises uh, and you know so, <laughs> so it's uh, they are also co-workers in a sense so the yeah 
uh, we, we truly care. And, and uh, I think and I hope that we reflect that in, in our way that we work. Um, but uh, one miscom um, it's called misconceptions, right, in English? Yep. Misunderstanding, yep. misconception yep. Yep. Uh, is that, um, you know, um, agencies, they are solely looking for the best possible athletes. Uh, they want to help the, the best ones, uh, no matter the price. Uh, I know uh, you and me does not uh, agree on that, at least, you know, what drives you to do this, David? What is the, uh, what is, what are the best um, client scenarios that you've had? Is that when the client is, is the best possible athlete or what, what makes a process fun for you uh, on, on your no. side of it? Yeah. Um, the, the quick answer is no, not at all. Um, yeah, don't get me wrong. It's always nice when you work with a, an, a top, you know, a top elite level athlete that goes to a, an elite institution in the states. That's fantastic. It's it's always exciting. But the 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 most the best possible thing, the most positive experience I've had in in, in working in this industry is when you work with genuinely good people, nice people that appreciate what you're doing, and you have a good line of communication with them, um, and they appreciate the opportunity ahead of them. There's a level for more or less everybody in the States within reason. So you don't have to be, you know, uh, representing your country at the Youth Olympics or, or you know, um, an England under 20 international. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Um, you can still get an incredible life experience out there from playing a more regional and local level uh, football or track or swim or golfer, etc. And the same in Sweden. Um so when somebody recognizes what their uh, realistic expectations are and that that's still going to be a incredible life experience, a once in a lifetime opportunity, um, seeing them realize that after all their hard work and our hard work combined, that is when I think it really sort of is something to sit back on and smile at um, because that, that for me is, is why I do this. And I know you're, you're very similar, Robin, with that as well. Yeah, yeah. And no, I totally agree. It's, it's the whole the whole process of itself you know you, you are always equally excited to get to know a new player and and get to know the family and such and and when you see a player working hard and doing the stuff that you ask them to do and that they appreciate the hard work that you put down and and you end up at a at a great result uh, you know it's 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 nothing better i have an example of, of uh, ebba now ebba costa playing for kansas she she and i talked for I think a year before she decided to join Aesthetic Academics and she had a school ranked 160 in, in, uh, in D1, which is really good. She's a very talented player. Uh, they were looking at her before we were in touch even. And she said, you know, if they want me, I'm going to go there and I don't need an agency's help. And I told her, you know, best of luck. I hope they like you because you're a great player. Uh, the school came back saying you're, you're not even close to be good enough. We had a meeting again. I laughed at it and said, I promise you, we're going to find you top 50 because you are a really really good football player and and she laughed at me saying yeah don't don't over promise now and and now she's playing for a top 10 team in the nation because we we found a team that sees her pure talent which is you know a technical a smart uh midfielder but that team ranked 150 didn't see that and that type of process is not because she ended up at a good program it's because uh, i saw potential in her she knew that what she can do others didn't see it we both agreed on a common target the family is great. Um, Ebba is great as well. Uh, you know, that type of processes yeah. are, uh, you know, the, the stuff that you, you very rarely forget. Yeah, and I think it's also important to also note as well that for, you know, both Robin and I have a football or soccer background, played as college soccer players, etc. And that's our, that's our sort of real expertise. But we've obviously worked with uh, athletes in other sports, in track, in swimming, in golf, etc. Um so by no means would I ever try and tell a golfer, for example, you know, try and pick apart their game. Um, but what, what we're not ever trying to do is say that we're experts in every field and every sport at one time. You as an athlete, you, you have the talent, you have the ability, and also with your academic achievements, that's what you have earned throughout your school years. Um, we have had no impact on that whatsoever. All that we are, athletic academics, is, is a, as a vehicle to put you on that platform so that you get the correct exposure at the right level that's befitting your ability. Um, that's all that we can do in, in giving you the guidance to know where to look. So with the best part of 1,700 universities in the States, it's extremely hard to know where to begin. So yeah. our expertise just takes your 
ability and, and what you are as, a, as an, a student athlete as one package and essentially promotes it to, to where you deserve to be promoted. Um, yeah. So that's worth remembering too. We, we're not taking any credit for your talents and achievements. No, no, not at all. And that's a big, big misunderstanding that, uh, uh, you know, uh, have you ever played, uh, have you ever uh, run track, for example? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, but that being said, uh, I know a lot about football and I know you do as well, David, but I never tell my uh, players how to play or how to practice to become no. better because that's their coach coach's thing. So uh, we have the just as big of an ability to help a, a track uh, runner or track uh, jumper or, or whatever they do, um, uh, just as good as we can help uh, soccer players or football players. So that really doesn't matter. And, and we have numerous, numerous examples of it. And I love working with other sports than football, so it's it's just uh, a great. Oof, the mailman just came in here. I, I ju- jumped <laughs> jumped two feet. He can join uh, in. Bring it yeah. in. <laughs> oh, I got really scared. Before we forget, uh, mention it. Better, better, better edit that bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but before we mention it, um, how did a, a you know a, a guy from Linköping in Sweden and and uh, a guy from uh, what's it called? Were you from in London? It is near uh, uh, Buckinghamshire as well. Buckinghamshire. How, how, how do we meet? How do we uh, you know, end up getting to know each other? Because it surely wasn't at college. We've met after college. How do we meet? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've got a couple of years, a couple of years older than you. Um, we won't say how old, but um, <laughs> but yeah, no. So, so Robin and I, we both uh, actually met by working together at another company within this industry. Obviously, Robin was still based in Sweden, and myself, uh, I was based in the UK. Um, but we w- began working together around the same time. I think a couple of months difference of when we started at that same place. Yeah. Um, and we were there for I think just over two years or so, and, and became close friends. Spoke, you know, a lot most days once we got to know each other um, and shared a lot of opinions and, and ways of thinking and, you know, had a very sort of big mutual respect. I always respected what Robin brought to the table and his ideas. He was, you know, fantastic work ethic as well. So he had my respect from, from day one with that. Um, and then, yeah, our sort of time came to an end. Actually, around the same time at that company, we actually went our separate ways. I decided to pursue an opportunity in the Met Police in London, which is something I'd always kind of considered doing as I, I actually got my degree in the States in criminology. So an opportunity came up there to become a sort of trainee detective constable. So I, I went and chose that pathway and moved away. Um, and Robin then moved away from the company as well and, and he can probably carry on with the what his next steps were yeah 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 uh, so i um uh, i separated ways with uh, with the former agency and uh, i've always had a dream of, uh, of of starting my my own college agency because i um uh, i was not very happy with my with my own college agency when when i went back back in the days it's it's quite quite a while since now it, it's actually the the 10 year anniversary since I started college uh, in 2020 now. So that's, that's super scary, but we're not going to talk about age. That will be a very uh, sad episode then. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I, um, after how long could we work there? Maybe um, two, years. two years. Yeah. Two years approximately. Um, I just felt like it's now or never at that time. I was um, 26, 27 and I felt like that, it's uh, now or never. Uh, it's obviously never now or never, but I felt like it was a good, good time for me to 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 test my wings. Um, told David about my plans. Um, uh, David then told me that he had plans uh, throughout his youth uh, to, to do the same as me, and then mentioned the name Athletic Academics. So I, I basically uh, stole it from from David. So uh, props to David for the name. Uh, after a few months at the police. Uh, not a few months, but a bit longer than that. Right, uh, yeah, we stayed in touch. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I always knew David was going to come back and, and, and join Athletic Academics. I, he, just needed, <laughs> he just needed time to realize it. Um, so after after a year of Athletic Academics, uh, David joined. And, and here we are today, uh, a year later than that. Uh, you are going into your first year anniversary here in April, right, if I don't remember right. it wrong uh, yeah. and, and I'm going into my two years uh, anniversary in, in July uh, so we're growing steadily uh, which is great and you know I'm I'm really happy who I've met 
David. Uh, he's a he's a really good friend of mine nowadays, and and I would have never thought that I would start a company with a with a random guy from from London. Uh, that would be uh, something I would would have never guessed. Uh, but I'm really happy. I think me and David we we complement each other really well. He's a he's a uh, human uh, knowing person. Or, I don't know how to say that in English, but he he knows the person <laughs> r- really well. He's a uh, uh, I don't think I've ever met someone who said something bad about David. Uh, I think I'm the, the bit bit of an opposite. I'm, I'm still a very kind person, of course, but I think I'm a bit more effective, not as detailed oriented as David. David's, David is more detail oriented. He needs to be perfect. For me, it, it rather goes quick than being perfect. And in that sense, I think we I think we complement each other quite well. Um, yeah. But let's move on to the to the last section of the of the pod, David, so we don't uh, get too long with the first pod, so we scare scare people away. Let's talk a bit about ourselves. What what we did before college, you know, your background, where you went at college, and and uh, what we've what we've done after college uh, is also because we, we had a few jobs uh, before um, sure. joining the college agency. Um, where did you play uh, football in, in England, for example? Yeah, so I, I grew up in kind of Middlesex, West London area. Um, went to school there and, and uh, kind of I played sort of Sunday league growing up. Nothing particularly special. Um, was briefly at, at Watford as a junior kind of thing, just for a, an extended trial. And then as a, as a sort of young and mid-teenager at Fulham and QPR. Um, but knew in my heart of hearts it wasn't ever going to happen for me at an academy. And, you know, with professional dreams like millions of young players have, I, I kind of knew deep down that it probably wasn't going to work out for me. Um, so I was pretty set of playing kind of county level football and, and, and uh, a decent standard of kind of midweek under 18s football when I got to that stage. Um, and did my A levels after GCSEs, um, did reasonably well, you know, nothing special but uh, not not bad either um, and then actually took uh, the opportunity to defer some English university options I had when I was 18 um, and then went and worked for a year I, I worked on the, the Harry Potter film studios for, for a year on one of the films there mm. um, just earning some money and, and kind of delaying the decision on what I was going to do next and during that kind of gap year as such I Found more, found out much more about the option to to go and play on a scholarship in America. Um, so I, I learned more and more about the process there, and and then considered working with a few companies, agencies that were around at the time, um, and kind of just wasn't particularly sold on what was being offered, and and I didn't think that it was. Well, my parents and I didn't really think it was particularly clear on what we should be expecting financially or from the level out there or, or anything whatsoever, really. So somewhat naively, um, we decided to pretty much go it alone and try and do it on our own, which looking back on it was was not the best way to do it at all. But through a lot of sheer hard work and also knowing a couple of people that uh, helped us out along the way through contacts, um, I managed to kind of land on my feet and get an opportunity to to play at a, a college in Florida called Florida Southern College. Yeah, and before a... you before you get started there, everyone needs to know that David is a is a few years older than me. Uh, he's a dinosaur compared to our to our, uh, to our players. He actually sent uh, uh, physical DVDs in, in in the in the mail to to coaches. So imagine now when we send a YouTube link for for two seconds, David sent hundreds and hundreds of, of DVDs. You've told yeah. me once how many you think you you sent. To, how, I how think many I there? had um, I had about four games, four games to send, and each yeah. disc there were each half of a game was one disc so there was uh eight discs and i probably sent that times 170 180 different schools in the mail yeah. uh, <laughs> over a few weeks and months so uh, yeah the, the, I, I was earning money and that's what it was spent on basically yeah, so a, lot, yeah. it's a lot easier these days with the click of a button but yeah, yeah. at least it wasn't vhs tapes so i'm not quite that old <laughs> Yeah, uh, but you you at least had conversations with the coaches uh, online, right, through emails. Yeah, I think it was pigeon post. Actually, I would put a letter in a pigeon's mouth and send it across the Atlantic. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, emails were, were, were we were doing emails. I'm not. Yeah, 
Yeah. All right. Sorry for disturbing you. Uh, you you ended up at Florida Southern. Oh, yeah. uh, the land is it? No, not the land. It's Lakeland, Florida. La- right? Lakeland, Florida. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's uh, if anyone's ever been to kind of Orlando for the Disney parks, it's about forty five minutes outside of there, or on towards Tampa. So you mm-hmm. pass it there. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful campus. Always ranked within the top sort of five or ten college campuses in the states. It's just a gorgeous place. Um, there's only about two and a half thousand students on campus. So in American terms, that was considered a very, very small school. Yeah. Um, it was NCAA division two as well. So it was a exceptionally good league for soccer, for football, especially, you know, especially with the teams we were playing against were always com- competing or winning the national championships. So we always had, you know, every week was a, a huge test to play against players from all over the world. Uh, and with them as well. Um, so it was an incredible experience for me um, there. And I, I would, if I could do it all again, I would go probably to the same place. It was, I was that lucky. So yeah, um, yeah did my four years there, decided to get my degree in criminology. Um, and then uh, during my senior year, I was looking at what I was going to do for the next steps. And I was applying to coaches all over the country for a position called a graduate assistant position. Uh, yeah. to become part of the coaching staff of a, of a different school. Um, and I was trying to get this for months and months during my final year in Florida uh, and finally got a, a position offered to me at St. John's University, which was a, a much bigger school, Division One school in Queens, New York. Um, uh, they were an NCAA Division One team when I, I joined the men's soccer coaching staff there uh, with Dave Mazer, who's the head coach, who was one of the probably one of the most renowned men's coaches in in the US so it was uh, a big experience to learn of him and the other coaches and um, work with some some really high level players there and we were you know a top 20 team in the nation for both my two years um and just had a fantastic experience and managed to get my master's degree paid for as as part of the deal so yeah my six years in total were i could be you know, a dream a really two different experiences but a fantastic one overall so i, I i'm very very fortunate and um, you did not take a master in in uh, criminology did you you took it in sports no, management that's correct yeah so i took my master's in sports management so um probably in another podcast we'll talk about the academic system a little bit but um yeah, yeah the freedom and flexibility to to pick and choose and change what you study in the states is very much available compared to how it is in europe and the rest of the world so yeah that was, so that uh, means you you have a bachelor in criminology and a master in sports management yeah yeah, yeah. so it's completely different but um but yeah both big strong interests for me in, in my life so it worked out quite nicely but what about yeah. you robin what about you from from where you started in sweden what, tell yeah us about- all right, so uh, we're lucky that I'm not speaking Swedish for, because for the for the people who are Swedish listening to this, I speak an accent called Ochotska, which is uh, probably uh, uh, like Scouser maybe in, in England. Okay. Uh, it, it's quite hard to, to understand and, and it's quite thick, my accent, so it's good that I'm speaking uh, speaking English. <laughs> uh, but but I've, I've basically played for the for the same club my, my whole youth. Uh, I'm, I'm from Linköping, as I said, and it's the called uh, Eko Strelambohov. So I've played the um, I came up uh, with the senior team when I was 16, 17, at, at uh, that age approximately. And I played two or three seasons uh, with the senior team uh, in, in Division Three in Sweden, um, which is the fifth national tier. So we have two leagues who does not uh, have a number to it. And then it can, the third league is called Division One. So it's not super, super logical, uh, but you Brits do the, the league one, which is the third one as well. So it, it does make some <laughs> sense after all. Uh, but I played the, the, the division three, um, in my senior year of high school, a friend of mine was going to a showcase. I had no clue about college. I had no clue what I was going to do with the, with my life after, after high school. I just heard, uh, football basically, uh, and, and, or soccer. Um, so I figured, you know, I can go to this showcase, went to the showcase, um, had no clue still what, what this was. Uh, didn't really listen to the information. I was um, probably being like any other teenage guy. Uh, we are uh, not the best at keeping uh, concentration and focus. At least I wasn't. Uh, but, you know, from there I signed up with an agency. Uh, signed up in, in uh, I think it was in January. So I was quite late. Did not take the SAT. Uh, only took the TOEFL. I only got two options to pick. I picked one of them. Uh, at that time, I did not do my research. I didn't do much whatsoever. Uh, so I figured, you know, uh, this coach was polite. I'll take this coach. 
Uh, so I ended up at a place called North Carolina Wesleyan College in uh, outside of Raleigh in North Carolina. Went there, um, did not agree with the coach, played the first five games, uh, ended up having a debate with the coach that he did not appreciate. Uh, I did not get to play my, my uh, uh, the rest of the season. Uh, I was I was benched. Uh, I uh, called my agency. I was crying, basically saying, you need to get me out of here. Uh, I need to do something else. Uh, didn't get a response after, uh, after like my f- fifth email. I got a response saying, yeah, if you pay us again, we'll help you. Um, so I figured, you know, no way. I, I'm not going to. Uh, I'll do this myself, um, which ended up uh, being me going down to a visit down to Nova Southeastern University in the same conference as uh, David was in. So if things would have gone a bit different, we would have played each other, actually. Uh, We had a verbal commitment, uh, which is basically uh, where you agree, uh, but not in written uh, on on my scholarship amount. I, I could cover that amount that they could give me. So I was really happy, really pleased moving down to Fort Lauderdale in Florida uh came home during summer break uh got my papers back home they did not add up to to what we agreed on which meant that i couldn't afford nova southeastern university anymore uh so i basically which is one of many reasons why you need our help is that you, you do not end up like i did uh with, with being uh, tricked by a coach or or ended up at a place at first that didn't fit you at all um so I gave up my my college dreams basically uh, during the summers uh, during the summer break. I played with my uh, former team. Uh, they had a guy shooting a documentary about the club. Actually, he he was a former college graduate, so he made an interview with me uh, amongst many. And and then he said, uh, you know, what 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 are you doing that right now? And I told him, uh, oh, I just came home from my freshman year at college, so I'm gonna stay home now. And I said, uh, how about you? Uh, what have you done and, and and such? And he told me that he's a graduate of North Park University. This was last week of July, uh, and I just uh, couldn't stop thinking of the university he mentioned. He said he loved it, so I emailed that university in the first week of August. Uh, and then two weeks later, I was at North Park University, which is a D3 school in Chicago. Uh, I took the chance. I got the chance from them. I took it without even thinking. Uh, ended up playing there for three years, completing my, my bachelor's degree uh, in business management. Um, so I, I stumbled across college, stumbled across my first university, my second university, uh, but absolutely loved North Park University in Chicago as uh, as not many know, is is a is a beautiful, beautiful uh, city. Uh, the school is located uh, inside the city, which is uh, a, an urban setting, which is quite unusual. Uh, I took the the L, as they call it, in fifteen minutes, and and I was in downtown Chicago. So so that was really really great. Uh, I loved every minute of, of of college. My my last three years. Um, after graduation, I worked uh, with uh, first and foremost in banking with uh, private and uh, and corporate uh, advising, uh, which is within my my uh, my major. Then I ended up at the college agency you and me worked for. Uh, so that is my short and brief um, intro about myself. There's plenty, plenty to uh, to discuss and and plenty to to talk about. But you and me are not gonna get to too long today and and this episode uh, is probably longer than you and me uh, already uh, estimated david uh, so yeah. um we should we should probably wrap that up for now we have plenty of ideas for episodes but we want to include you guys the the listeners uh because this is a pod First and foremost, that that is for you. It, it's not a, a pod where me and David is, are gonna uh, be experts and 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 talk about what we think is important. Because your listeners and and our clients, our potential clients, whomever you are, uh, we want to know what you wanna you wanna hear. Uh, and we have two Instagrams. First and foremost, that we promote ourselves uh, in. Uh, what's the name of yours, David? Yeah. So uh, mine is athleticademics.uk. Yeah, um, and mine is athleticademics.se. And the reason being why we have two separate uh, Instagram accounts is that we want to write in our native language. So in, in the athleticademics.se, it's it's only written in Swedish. And uh, at the UK, it's written in English. And you also work with uh, uh, Danish 
uh, students as well, David. That, that's important to, to mention. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, and that's and, something uh, we we'll, we'll go on to talk a little bit about and and kind of be a little bit more um, individual to, to other nations as as there's questions come in and in the weeks coming ahead, we can we can take take questions there that, that apply sometimes just to Danes or to British or to Swedish students. So um, it, everybody kind of is is very much included in this. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. And and it won't be a football-specific uh, pod uh, because no. uh, we're not a football-specific agency. So we will talk about plenty of sports, uh, talk about plenty of our own experiences, plenty of information. It will be we will we have a lot to cover and we are aiming to do this uh weekly so we are aiming for having it as a weekly podcast uh so if you have suggestions if you have just the one question where you want us to talk about in the podcast whatever you think about the podcast let us know uh dm us on instagram is probably the easiest way uh, otherwise you can email us uh you can find it on our website atheticademics.com uh, we are very very easy to find uh so just don't be scared to reach out to us. We are nice people if you ask us. Uh, so they, you, should, you shouldn't be afraid. You can just let us know. Um, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap up this episode? Yeah, and just if you have listened today and uh, managed to get through the whole thing with us, we really do appreciate that. It's our first time doing a podcast, so um, look kindly on us as we'll, we'll hopefully get better and better with time management as the weeks go on as well, and we include what you want to hear. Um, but please subscribe and also share it with friends, teammates, that kind of thing, parents, anybody you think that might be interested to hear some of the, the things that we're talking about, please, please share it um and yeah let, get in touch with us and let us know what you want us to talk about yeah so the podcast will be available on spotify or uh, and youtube uh, so if you want to subscribe to the to the podcast on spotify we would love that uh, if you want to do it on youtube that'd be great and uh, we always upload our clients uh, uh, marketing videos so if you want to have ideas and, and uh, uh, tips and ideas about how the videos should look just go into our YouTube channel and subscribe and you get a notification every time we have a, a new video. Um, yep. But, and a but lot yeah. of info is also, uh, just to add as well, a lot of info you can also find on our blogs, uh, both on the Swedish website, athleticademics.se, and also on the English-speaking website, which is athleticademics.com. Um, you'll see a, a list of different blogs on there that cover lots of different topics too. So this just this is, as I say, just one other way that we're trying to get info out there with a, a sort of verbal form. Um, but we, we, we can get the information to you in a number of ways. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. We appreciate it if you made it all this way and, uh, uh, we will get back uh, next week. Yep. Stay healthy, everybody. And speak to you soon. Mm-hmm.